Master the art of insinuation. Don't tell your target what you're thinking and feeling. Hint at it and let them guess. Use words that insinuate your emotions, but don't exactly give them away. Your target wants to figure you out by herself. It's more exciting and more interesting, and the tension between you two will intensify, as well as the attraction. Do or say something bold that doesn't completely give you away, something that gets them thinking and wondering. Then apologize and move on with the interaction as if you didn't say what the target thinks you meant to say. The seed has been planted, let it grow, water it every once in a while. It starts with your suggestive comment or action. They will interpret it in a pleasant way, and they will unconsciously exaggerate the fantasy without you having to do much. Human beings are egotistical, so the target will fall in love with the idea because she came up with it. You just triggered it. You planted the seed. But because what you said or did was only suggestive and subtle and it left room for doubt, they won't feel manipulated and they won't grow defensive. A young man, let's call him John, was on his way to the opera to meet with his lover, a countess we will call Abigail. They had been fighting, and he was nervous to see her again. When he arrived, she wasn't there yet. He was determined to wait for her, but another woman, we'll call her Catherine, approached him and started a conversation. She told him she was lucky to run into him. She had to leave on a trip, and she wanted him to come with her. He was there to see Abigail, not to leave on a trip with some random woman, but she was charming and insistent and she convinced him. They hopped in her carriage and left. Everything was so quick that he didn't have the chance to ask where they were going nor why she wanted him to come with her. On the way, she told him they were going to her husband's chateau. Apparently, she wasn't that interested in her husband anymore. John was intrigued, but confused. She was looking through the window when she mentioned how beautiful the landscape was. She told him to take a look, but to do so, he had to move towards her side and when he did, the carriage lost its balance, and it jolted. It jolted so strongly that it made Catherine jump off her seat and fall into John's lap. She stayed there for a moment, then quickly pulled away and blamed him for trying to seduce her. He apologized and tried to explain it was an accident, but she seemed so convinced of his intentions that part of him actually believed her. When they arrived, they had dinner with her husband. John mentioned how lovely the chateau was, what you see is nothing, she said. I must take you to the Monsieur's apartment and quickly change the subject. He was curious, but she didn't give him the chance to ask what was so special about that place. Her husband excused himself when he was done eating, leaving both of them alone for the rest of the night. She took him by the hand and showed him around the garden. John was puzzled. He went to the opera to meet with his lover and found himself leaving with some random woman, having dinner with her and her husband and he was now having what seemed to be a romantic walk with her. She told him she wasn't worried about him making a move. He was with Abigail, and he was clearly a good man that would never be unfaithful, but she was well aware that she was having a strong effect on him. She asked him about his relationship. He said they had been fighting a lot, and he wasn't happy, but he still loved her. She briefly mentioned the possibility of Abigail cheating on him. Funny enough, that's something he had already thought about, but was not sure of. That subtle comment turned that little seed of doubt into a fully grown tree. She apologized for saying that. She didn't want to worsen his relationship, or so it seemed. He wasn't defended, but her apology didn't change his mind. He felt sure that Abigail was cheating on him, and he wanted revenge. They entered the pavilion and they began to kiss. They were having a good time, but she had to stop. She didn't want her husband to find out she was cheating on him. She had to return home. John got worried. Did he do something wrong? Maybe he took it too far. When they returned to the house, she told him she had a good night with him, but the Monsieur's apartment would have been a better place to spend the night. She wasn't going to show it to him, though, because he was misbehaving. She had mentioned the Monsieur's apartment before. What was so special about it? He was dying to know. He promised to behave and he begged her to take him. She led him there, and it indeed was a very nice room like a temple of pleasure. He got excited, and he continued with what he started in the pavilion. The sun came up, and it was time for him to leave. She walked him to the door and said goodbye. On his way back home, he looked back at what had happened, and he couldn't assign a meaning to it. Did she manipulate him? Did she use him for sex? Did she even like him? He was more confused than ever, but he was sure of one thing. He just had the best night of his life. 
Catherine's weapon of choice to seduce John was insinuation. With it, she successfully made him believe he was the one trying to seduce her, that Abigail was cheating on him, and she tempted him to enter the Monsieur's apartment, all to get the night of pleasure she desired. As the night went on, the less he knew what was going on. She knew that she was bound to end up in his arms when she asked him to lean over to her side in the carriage, but she made him believe that he was the one to initiate the physical contact, not her. Their conversation about his relationship made him miss Abigail for a moment, but her little comment made him believe she was cheating on him, so it seemed okay for him to do the same. She planted the seed, and nothing was going to stop it from growing, not even her apology. When they got to the pavilion, it was obvious he was going to make a move, and even though she initially received it, the fact that she pulled away left him wanting more. The second time she mentioned the Monsieur's apartment, she had him. He was eager to go there and finish what he started. Finally, he left, and he was confused. He had no idea what had just happened with Catherine, but this allowed him to guess and to wonder. It was all very exciting to him. The way insinuation works is simple. Disguised in a banal remark or encounter, a hint is dropped. Words of affirmation early on make you look needy and even manipulative. Your target will grow defensive and you won't be able to seduce them. Insinuation is a better seduction strategy. It's a powerful way to provoke attraction, especially when you're just getting to know your target. Insinuate doubt with a comment here and there. Gently touch the other person to insinuate desire. Look them directly in the eyes for a couple of seconds to hint that you like them. Speak to them with a warm tone of voice. Say something that suggests you're interested, but always make sure that your words are subtle and don't reveal your true intentions. Everything you say and do should leave room for doubt. Indicators of interest like these will get them thinking of you, but they will be so subtle that your target won't take you for granted. You're planting seeds in the mind of the victim that will grow over time. You won't even have to be there when they start to fantasize about the ideas you stirred up. They won't be aware of what you did and what is happening so there will be no need for them to grow defensive. Once the seed has been planted, time and space will become your greatest allies. These will slowly make them fall under your spell. No seducer succeeds without mastering the art of insinuation. We naturally question people's true intentions. We know that words aren't always reliable. This is why we try to read bodies and faces. These are harder to fake, so they tell us more about the person than their words. Since people are always reading your looks, Use them to transmit the insinuating signals you choose. Insinuation is the language of pleasure. Most people don't give much thought to the words that come out of their mouths. They say whatever they're thinking and feeling. These people are not very interesting. There's no mystery to them. We want someone to feed our fantasies. Life lacks ambiguity, so a person who uses insinuation to communicate will seem more mysterious and attractive. Hints, suggestions, and insinuations create a seductive atmosphere, signaling that their victim is no longer involved in the routines of daily life, but has entered another realm. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more.